Ed Van Amraka with two second places, putting him on 30. Third in the leaderboard is Matteo Grattarola. He's on 21 points. Toby Martin, currently fourth, uh, but he is absent tonight on British Championship duty. An opportunity then for the Raiders directly behind Jaime Busto and Sondre Hager to make up ground. Busto on 13 championship points, Sondra Hager on eight, as is uh, Bonobi Kaz of France and Gabriel Marseille of Spain, who is eighth in the championship standings on one. Mikel Gelabert will be the first rider out through the sections tonight. That's because he's yet to feature, of course, in the championship in 2022. So uh, yet to score his first championship points of the campaign. Eight riders then, with six sections to complete for the first time in 2022. They've got six minutes in which to complete them in the lowest possible score. Six riders out of eight will qualify through to the second round, and only three of those will qualify to tonight's grand final. Mikel Gelabert, fifth in his last X-Trial appearance, that was X-Trial Barcelona in November, under the lights of uh, Matteo Grattarola and Toby Martin, who've both made the podium this season. So Gelabert will certainly be optimistic of a big result here tonight. Gelabert, of course, uh, made his debut in the 2018 X Trial campaign. Scored a shock second place in what was just his third appearance at X Trial Strasbourg. Then recorded his second podium a year later in Marseille. But his best results since then have been two fourth places at the start of 2020. Of course, officials giving the OK now to get us underway with the first rider of the night, Mikel Gelabert. His first run, section number one. Moment of nerves for the 24-year-old from Barcelona. Making his way onto the first step nicely enough. Making a step down. Clean so far from Mikel Gelabert. First mission accomplished. A series of islands of modules here for the riders to make their way through. Not much of a run up here for Gelabert to force his way through, but he does so nicely and without taking a mark for leaning. Remember, if the, the base uh, or the engine plates touches the section, that will be a mark for leaning. Any part of the bike other uh, than the tyres. The mudguard went necessary, of course, in terms of space. Gelabert makes the leap again on the back wheel, tries to avoid taking a mark for leaning, but he has slid onto the sub. So it's a single mark for Mikel Gelabert. The toughest still to come. Down he goes, and he's out of the section. It's down to a fight for Mikel Gelabert in section number one. Said the toughest was still to come. He got himself caught pretty awkwardly there, but I'm sure he would have liked to get it up on the back wheel and jump down. As he does jump down, he overbalances, teeters, and then eventually bails out of the section. So straight up into section number two now for Mikel Gelabert. We saw how tough it was for Gabriel Marseille a week ago to open the sections with no reference points. Oh. Single mark for leading there, Mikel Gelabert. Just on the top of the first of our eight frames, lands it on the sub. Needs to steady the ship now after a five in his opening right. This is looking much better though, for Mikel Gelabert. Section two with just a single mark. That's more like it. Six from two then for Mikel Gelabert, who will now move on to the cable reel, section number three. Sizable step with which we open here, as you can see. Frustrating to leave the section. First time out, but bouncing back nicely. Immediately takes a mark for leaning. On the uh, first of the cock reels, he's slipping back, and down he goes to a five. Mikel Gelabert with two fiascos in the opening three sections. Well, I made the comparison with Gabriel Marseille being the first rider out a week ago in chalon sur -Sern and ending up bailing out in the opening round. Will the same fate befall Mikel Gelabert? It's not been a good start, although I will add that the uh, difficulty level of the sections in Madrid tonight probably higher than anything we've seen in our two-season opening rounds in France. Look at this, for example. Big challenge here. No run-up whatsoever, and Gelabert is straight down to a five. That's going to be one of the toughest sections, I fancy of this uh, round number one. So three failures in four sections for Mikel Gelabert. Section one, he'll be frustrated about. 
that one section four I think will be a tough nut to crack for the majority of the riders in this round number one. Gelabert's only managed to make it through one section so far, section number two. The man who finished fifth in the world in 2018 and 2019. That stage on board uh, Sherco Machinery, of course. Seems made a couple of uh, switches of manufacturer to Vertigo in 2020, to Gas Gas in 2021. Never had much time to acclimatise to those bikes before the X trial season, but this now is second campaign with Gas Gas. He's hoping that that consistency of manufacturer will work in his favour. Section 5, elegant work there on the back wheel from Mikel Gelabert. That's the bulk of this one cracked, I think. Gelabert will be looking for a clean now in section number 5. He's cautious with that final leap, and he is through clean in the penultimate section of his opening run. 16 marks then from five sections for Mikel Gelabert. One to go. Plenty of time on the clock because of those early failures in sections uh, three and particularly section four. Big step with which to open. Gelabert was almost up, but he is down. And it's a five mark score in section number six. It's a 21 mark finishing total. Two sections he managed to make it through out of six. And I think Gelabert would have been hoping for a great deal more than that on what is his debut for this set 2022 campaign. Short and sweet, Mikel Gelabert's reaction over the public address system here in the Madrid Arena. Uh, I think he'll be pretty disappointed with uh, that showing. Didn't get off to a good start with a failure in section number one. There was some elegant work, though, here in uh, section two, and then later in section five as well. Is that wave at the end of his first run also a wave goodbye to the spectators in Madrid tonight? That remains to be seen. 21 marks, then, the target total for Gabriel Marseille, who's the second rider out into the sections here this uh, evening. Marseille, who was eighth and last at Extra Chalon sur son last weekend, a real shock. Man who finished second in his previous appearance at uh, Extra Barcelona back in November. So he was nervous first out through the sections in France. And so really it showed back to back failures kicked off his run. He was unable to recover from there. He's got the advantage now of having seen Mikel Gelabert open the track tonight. Although Gelabert managed to get all the way through in uh, four of the sections, of course, just two. Completed successfully by Mikel Gelabert. Gabriel Marseille then. Makes his way successfully through that first step. So though did Mikel Gelabert. It was on the uh, third of these modular islands that Gelabert got himself into difficulties. First landing on the sun and falling forwards and having to go out of the section to avoid falling face first, frankly. Gabriel Marseille. Taking his time. He's up eventually. Top of that second island. Now it's about his technical challenge. He too will land it on the sub. Single mark for leaning. Let me take a slightly different approach here. Certainly looks like it. He's sliding across on the sub, putting himself at a very different angle to, to that which we saw from Mikel Gelabert. Still a single mark, of course, he hasn't made any forward progress whilst uh, leading on that sub. That's more like it. Avoids the pitfall of Gelabert behind before him. This is still a big step, though. And again, not much of a run-up. Very small platform there for Marseille. Up he goes, he's done it! Gabriel Marseille with a beautiful ride there in section number one. It's just a single mark for leaning. Immediately gives himself an important advantage over Mikel Gelabert, the first man out. Good start for Marseille, unlike a week ago in Chalon Field so Section number two now. Uh, so Mikel Gelabert take a mark for leaning on the uh, first of the A-frames, which is the next task for Gabriel Marseille. 
building himself up. A little bit short. Great balance being shown on the back wheel. Makes the lead now. Single mark for leading, just as it was for Mikel Gelabert before him. Won't want to drop any further ground now in this section. Gabriel Marcy on the turn. Nicely done. One final leap, and then it's the exit gate for Gabriel Marcy. Two sections done and dusted. Both of them completed successfully. A single mark in each. Marseille moves on to two. Mikel Gelabert was on six already at this stage. Only four failures now with the Marseille behind where we saw from uh, Mikel Gelabert before. A little bit of a tangle there for Marseille at the start of section three. A single mark for leading and another for uh, footing. We saw the foot go down, so it's two marks now for Gabriel Marseille on the cable in section three. We saw these in a slightly different configuration in Chalons sur Seine uh, last week. Uh, the edges of those cable reels really catching riders out on that occasion for Marx Fellini. Spotted bottle there for Marseille as the section moved underneath the, the weight of the machine. Presses on nicely, rushes through to the finish. Efficient ride late on in section three from Gabriel Marseille. Immediately down at the start of section four. Wouldn't surprise me if that was slightly tactical. I suspect that that section is going to be beyond the reach of the vast majority of riders. And Marseille may well feel that he wants to give himself the best possible time to try and tackle sections five and six that look a great deal more achievable. Taking a breather, Marseille, he'd already left his uh, bottle in, in prime position just after the halfway point in his opening run. Gabriel Marseille then. Nine marks, four sections so far. Single dab in each of the opening two. Two marks score in section three, one for leading, one for sitting. First failure in section four. Section five, this one was cleaned by Miguel Gelabert. I'll say he already guaranteed to beat Gelabert, even if he scored two failures now, he'd move on to 19. That's still two better than Gelabert before him. Mikel Gelabert very much in the danger zone. First rider out through the section. Gabriel Marseille. Drops a single mark there. First mark we've seen dropped in this section five because uh, Gelabert was clean. Now it's about careful riding through the remainder of this section. Almost a straight run. Some precision required. Some precision delivered. By Gabriel Marseille. Just a single mark in section five. He moves on to ten from five and one to go. Clear of Marseille, uh, of Gelabert, rather, because he doesn't know whether this is going to be enough to qualify. The second rider out through the section, Gabriel Marseille. Section number six, looking to really lay down a marker. See it from that wide shot, the extent of that leap at the start of the section. Puts down his uh, right foot there, Marseille. A mark for leaning as well. So landing on the sump, plus the foot going down. Two marks for Marseille. Race now and a scramble to the exit gate. How does he approach this? Try to leap as soon as he gets across this uh, first cylinder. No, front wheel down, the bridge. 17 seconds still on the clock. It's going to be tight. He can take his time here. Only one more step to come. 10 seconds to go for Gabriel Marseille. He's up. It's a single mark for leading, but he's through. With five seconds to spare, Gabriel Marseille. It'll be three marks in section six. Another for leading there at the end. But a 13 mark total. That's eight clear of Mikel Gelabert. And that puts him in a very strong position as a candidate for qualification inside the top six here this evening. Good ride that from Gabriel Marseille. Just one section proved beyond his reach, section four. Single dab in sections one and two. Two marks in section three. And then that becomes the first rider to get through to section six. So uh, three sections there that Mikel Gelabert failed, all completed successfully by Gabriel Marseille. Four failures out of six for Gelabert. Only one failure for Marseille. Big difference between the two of them. Eight marks in terms of the points. Next up is Benoit Bincaz. 
The Frenchman already on the comeback trail, of course, from injuries over the last two years. He's picked up another couple of knocks in the opening rounds of this 2022 campaign. Had a crash in section three of his first run in Chalon sur Son last weekend, twisted his right uh, leg and knee particularly awkwardly. That crash the main reason he failed to make progress out of the bottom two. If he beats the 13 mark score here, he is guaranteed his place in round two. For extra Madrid here in the Madrid Arena. Six minutes for six sections. He goes back a little bit short on that uh, first leap, but manages to force the bike forward. That first step not posing any great difficulties to the riders so far. Single uh, drop mark there for footing. The right foot goes down for Buno Bincaz. None of the riders previously had dropped a mark there, so that will be a source of frustration for him. Another mark drop there for leaning by, uh, by my reckoning, although the uh, section observer, Jordi Sanchez, has been more generous than I perhaps would have been. And he is still on just one. Step now for Buno Bincaz. This is the challenge. Oh, and down he goes! He tried a different approach to Mikel Gelabert, who landed it on the sump and then tried to balance his way down. Bunuar Bikau tried to do it all in one, full in motion, and down he went. Out of the section, for you in section one for Bunuar Bikau. Far from ideal start. The man who currently sits seventh. Classification. Section two then. Both Mikel Gelabert and Gabriel Marseille took just a single mark here, and it was on the first of these three A frames. Kaz with the leap, and he too landed on the sump for a single mark score. Moves him up to six. Mikel Gelabert was on the same score at the same stage, so Kaz won't want to drop any more marks in the remainder of this second section. Building himself up nicely, you can see the uh, rear hand guard completely broken by uh, because in section number one, he goes in section two, single drop mark. His assistant just taking off the uh, fractured piece of uh, mudguard there before he embarks on section number three. Six marks from two then, same score as Gelabert at the same stage. No, that piece of uh, rear mudguard still flailing around as uh, Bunuar Minkas presses on. Section three, completed successfully by Gabriel Marseille. Mikel Gelabert failed here. Mikel with an opportunity to move above Gelabert. Clear of him, get a result in this. Nice work there from Bono Abincaz. This is more like it from the Frenchman. I see he struggled in this one to uh, two marks, but battled his way through. Abincaz is going to take one there for leading. That's his first drop mark of this section. The most the best of anyone through this section number three is Bono Abincaz of France. Taking his time at the end of this section, drops another there for leaning, but he is through. Two marks, that moves him on to eight. Three better than Mikel Gelabert at the halfway stage of his opening run. Straight down to a five at the start of section four. Two to go. Section five. Kaz, four marks down on Gabriel Marseille at the same stage. Both of them on 13. Kaz filled with two sections to right. Any further drop marks, and he will drop behind Marseille. And that will guarantee that Gabriel Marseille progresses through to round two of extra Madrid. Two and a half minutes. A swift failure at the start of section four, leaving the cows with plenty of time. Because going down, down in section five, where the two riders before him had successfully made it through, and now it's all or nothing in section six. Bincaz on 18, Jalabert, remember, finished on 21. If Benoit Bincaz scores a failure here in section six, he will go behind Mikhail Jalabert in the standings. Three marks would put him level with Jalabert, and uh, 
see how things pan out from there. Ooh, Single drop mark for leaning at the start of section six then, a crucial a section six now for Bruno Bincaz. He might have accepted being behind Marseille after a strong ride from him, but he won't want to be behind Mikel Jalabert as well, who suffered four fiascos. Clumsy from Bincaz in section five, his third failure of the run. A fourth would send him two marks behind Mikel Jalabert. With only five riders still to come, of course. One minute ten now on the clock. For Bruno Bincaz, that'll be another mark for leading, I fancy. Two marks then. One final step to come for Bruno Bincaz. Moves on to 20. One more to play with, and he'll tie. With Mikel Jalabert. If he gets through this section, he will be ahead of Mikel Jalabert on, on a count back on time. Up he goes, it is a single mark. But what he does has just about squeezed through. Ahead of Mikel Jalabert. We'll wait for official confirmation of that. The pair will tie on 21, but by my reckoning, Mikel Jalabert failed at section six. We'll lose out on countback to Bruno Bincaz. So the provisional standings, Marseille 13, Bincaz 21, Jalabert 21 as well. So Gabriel Marseille is confirmed in uh, round number two. Bruno Bincaz started well enough in section two and three, getting through both of them with the same scores as Gabriel Marseille, but he failed section one, and then failed sections four and five consecutively. Had he failed section six as well, he would have gone to the bottom of the pile, so it was crucial that he make it out through there. And he does so one position then, ahead of Mikel Jalabert, at the end of his run. And whether Benoit Bincaz now progresses to the second round may well depend on the efforts of Sandre Haga, the next man out. Gabriel Marseille, 13. Benoit Bincaz, 21. Mikel Jalabert, likewise, 21, but loses out to Bincaz because of his failure in section five. On now to Sandre Haga. One of the stars of the show last weekend, certainly progressing past the opening round of competition for the first time, and he was as high as fourth after his opening run in chalon sur seine only to drop back behind Matteo Grattarola later on in the night. Single drop mark there for uh, leading at the start of section one for Sondre Hager. Landing on the sub, but uh, making the turn from here the level of difficulty in the section only gets higher. To leap here, and then a descent that's put out a couple of riders already. Two riders failed this section, one out of three. Mikel Jalabert and Bunuar Bincaz were both down for a fight. Hacker with some good work, but he's overreached on the descent, and down he goes, out of the section. Five marks for in section one. Not disastrous just yet for the Norwegian, because the two men he's got a beat. Mikel Jalabert and Bruno Bincaz both dropped a five mark score there. Section two now. This one has taken each of the three riders so far for a single dab. A mark for leaning on the first of the eight. Haga is up and into section two. Decision now required. High-scoring first run thus far. Demonstrating the difficulty level of these sections, as I suggested, would be the case. Haga is up. Looks a little bit short, but the, uh, the weight carries him forward, and he remains in the section. Almost dropped off the edge of the A-frame there, and uh, could have been disastrous, but brings it back. Sondre Haga looking good to exit section. Number two, with just a single mark. Back to Mikel Jalabert, Gabriel Marseille, and Bonobic Kaz before him. Section three, then, for Sondre Haga. This one saw Mikel Jalabert suffer a failure. Gabriel Marseille and Bruno Bincaz were both through with two marks to their name. Oh. 
single mark so far for Sondre Hager. It's later on in the section that Bruno Abin Kerr dropped his marks. Another half for Lee. Score of two so far for Sondre Hager. That'll be three. Any further drop marks, and this will be a failure. Important final step now for Sondre Hager. He's got to do it without dropping any marks for leaning. It needs to be a big lead. Up he goes. Actually, he balances carefully. But that's going to be another mark for leaning, and that's a failure in section number three. Moves him on to 11. Mikel Gelabert was on the same score at the same stage. Immediate failure at the start of section four, as per the three riders before him. So Sondre Hager up to 16, so already can't beat Gabriel Marseille. He's got five marks to play with against Mikel Gelabert and Benoit Bincaz. Can he get through both sections five and six? and become the second rider to book his place in round two of Extra Madrid. Bruno Abincaz might be able to breathe a sigh of relief that he just squeezed home at the end of section six ahead of Mikel Jalapet. Well, it's not lost just yet for Sondre Hager. He got out of the uh, first round of competition for the first time last time out. That's going to be a mark for leaning, and it's an awkward mark for leaning. And if he twists awkwardly here, he could fall backwards out of the section. But he's managed to just about stay in and continue to press on. Single mark for Leaning. Mikel Gelabert was clean through here, so Hager. Oh, great work there from Sondre Hager rushing through. Others took a more measured approach. This will leave Sondre Hager on 17 marks from five sections. If he gets through section six, he will go through to the second round. Single mark then, 17 the score. It's all down to section six for Sondre Hager. He's on 17, four behind Gabriel Marseille, but four up on Benoit Bincaz and Mikel Gelabert. So if he makes it through this section six, it will be a total of 20 or better. If he fails here, though, Sondre Hager will go behind both Bincaz and Gelabert, and that will confirm Bincaz's progression. Okay, he's up, but he's slipping backwards. He's taken him up for leading one for footing, and down he goes! Sondre Hager down in section number six. That confirms the safe progression of Munro Kaz. Through to round two here this evening. Just a single mark separating Bincaz, Jalabert and Hager at the bottom of the standings. But it's Mikel Jalabert and Sondre Hager who's now, who's now slipped into the drop zone. This is the failure from section one for Sondre Hager. Too much momentum carrying him out of the uh, course boundaries and a five mark score first time out steadies the ship in section two section three the second rider to fail there section four seemingly impossible for all of the riders so far good ride in section five but section six proving critical and a fall at the opening to it leaves him a single mark behind big cas and miguel de la Bear. And very much in danger now, I fancy, of elimination. As you would suggest, is Mikel Gelabert at present. Gabriel Marseille and Bruno Bincaz both safely through to round two. Over then to Jaime Busto. representative Vertigo in this uh, extra world championship. It's been a very disappointing start to 2022 for him. Never looked like making the podium in Nice. Uh, two failures in his first run left him well back. And he was somewhat fortunate in the end to finish fourth. And last weekend, he was in contention to progress and suffered a late collapse with a crash in uh, section four of his second run. And that ended his night. I'm a Busto then, fifth in the championship standing, set to move fourth tonight in the absence of uh, Toby Martin. Section number one. No ride has been cleaned through this one so far. Only Gabriel Marseille has made it through. Mikel Gelabert, Puno Abincaz and Sondre Hagot all failing this one. The second island, five here. Up he goes on the back wheel. The landing needs to be precise. It is. Makes the turn. So he's been to the penultimate island. 
of section one. The step of the section now to come for Jaime Busto. Not much of a runner, as I said previously. Marseille made it superbly. Only one to do so, so far. Big rev from Busto, forces his way up. Single drop bar for Jaime Busto in section number one. Great start for him. On now to section two. This one about consolidation. Everyone's dropped a single mark so far. Oh, Busto down! In a section that all four riders before him had successfully completed. And suddenly Busto has an awful lot of work to do. Ironically, in the vertigo section as well. Almost caught his uh, minder in the face with his right foot as he fell from the section. On the very first step, perhaps overthinking the A-frames that were still to come. And Busto goes down in section two. First rider to fail section two. Now he needs to keep a cool head and bring himself back into contention. Jelabert, Vincaz and Hager were all on six marks at this stage. So far from disastrous for Busto. As long as he gets it right for the remainder of this run. Section three, cable reels. Failed by Mikel Jelabert, failed by Sandre Hager. Marseille and Vincaz both made it through with two drop marks. I remember that you can see the section moving there as Gusto tries to balance himself. The Basque rider, single drop mark there for leading a little bit short on the landing. All the best of anyone so far through this section three. Good work on the back wheel there. Beautiful from Jaime Gusto. It was tight there on the exit gate, actually. But uh, Gusto makes it through with a single drop mark. Best result of anyone so far in section number three. Ah, Immediately fouls section four. Four. 12 then from four sections. And if he gets through either of the remaining two, Jaime Busto will be through to the second round tonight. Not convincing in section two, that was disappointing. 12 marks. Haga and Jalabel 16 at the same stage. Even three marks here would be enough for Jaime Busco to book his place in the second round of Extra Madrid. Not a strong lap, but it could... Oh, dear! So he's still in the section. No, he isn't. He's down for a five. What is it? Keeps it on the island, so it's three at the moment, but that is definitely down for a five. Busto was looking over at the uh, section observer, trying to ascertain whether he'd already received a five or whether he was still in the section. Only the second rider to fail section five. Another failure here, and Busto will be eliminated. Three marks and he'll be through, but it will have been a scrappy first run, and it will surely leave him with work to do if he does make it to the second round. He's up with a single mark for leaning on the first step of section number six. Well, I must admit that in my uh, pre-event predictions, I said that tonight was the night for Busto's first podium of 2022. It's not looking good at the moment, is it? Three marks down on Gabriel Marseille before coming into this section six. He dropped one so far. That final step is going to be yes or no for Jaime Busto for progression to the second round tonight. If he makes it through this section, he is through. If he fails this section, he drops into the bottom two. Jaime Busto, one and a half minutes, no issues on time. It's all about getting through. His final barrels at the end of section number six. He's landed in on the sub, he's got to force the bike forward. He does so, it's two marks in section six. And Jaime Busto becomes the third rider to book his place in the second round of competition this evening. 19 marks, a scrappy section two in particular, a disappointing failure in section five. Jaime Busto then finishes his round with 19 marks, that is clear of Benoit Vincaz and Mikel Jalabert. Three clear of those two and four clear of Sandre Hager. 
to move his place in round number two this evening. We'll head into the second round, though, five marks back on Gabriel Marseille. The main point of difference between them was that five mark score for Jaime Busto in section two. Again, inconsistency from Jaime Busto, section two. Completed successfully by the four previous riders. He goes and fails it after a great ride in section one. And then a failure in section five that again, only for Robin Cows previously had failed under the uh, federal full ride. Salvages it in section six and takes these earlier. Strong ride in section one. So the pecking order now. Gabriel Marseille 13, Jaime Busto 18, Bunua Bincas 21. Those three definitely through to the second round. Mikel Gelabé 21 and Sondre Haga 22 are in the drop zone. On to Matteo Gratarola. The Italian third at Extra Nice three weeks ago. The first podium of his Extra career, age 34. Showed more of that form in a fantastic second round at Extra. Chalon sur son last week. Uh, three fiascos in his first outing, though, had left him too far back to qualify. He could only recover to fourth. Key for him tonight will be to have a strong run first time out and not leave him with himself with so much work to do to try and battle back into the top three. So Grattero, key moment of section one here, on the back wheel, makes the turn and the landing. Yeah, Work from Grattero. Pulls the bike back now on this step. Two riders have made it through this section one, both with a single mark, Gabriel Marseille and Jaime Busto. It's a pretty sizable step. Main element for section number one. Up he goes, Grattarola, set to be the first rider clean through section one. Brilliant start from uh, Matteo Grattarola. Only had one clean in all of the sections combined up to now. That was uh, Mikel Gelabert in section five. That's only the second. And the first rider clean through section one is Matteo Grattarola. All start. Section two now. Four riders have dropped a single mark through this one. Does Grattarola just take that single mark on the A-frame? Or does he try to do something different on the back wheel and attempt to remain clean in his opening run? Well, it looks like he's trying to force himself forward. No, he too falls short, lands on the sub and takes a single mark for leaning. It's a big launch to try and force yourself all the way across. And land it carefully on the back wheel and all of that without uh, falling forward, of course. So Matteo Grattarola drops his first mark of the run. Still looking good, though. Looking straightforward for all of the riders from this point on, and it is two for Matteo Grattarola. Single drop mark in section two. That's one better than uh, Gabriel Marseille at the same stage. Now over to section three. Two riders have failed this one, Mikel Gelabert and Sondre Haggard. Jaime Busto doing a good job of the cable reels last time out with just a single mark. Single mark just at the start of the section for Matteo Grattarola. This is looking clumsy. Another mark for uh, footing there. If he's not careful, any further drop marks are, are going to be a failure here for Grattarola. I make that three already. That's a four, so that's a failure in section three. Didn't see that coming. Only Gelabair and uh, Hager, who are the two men in the drop zone at the moment, failed that section before Grattarola. This could well be another failure now for the Italian. Section four hasn't been completed by anyone yet, and nor will it be completed by Matteo Grattarola. 11 marks then for four, only two ahead of Gabriel Marseille. But unless it's two failures, Matteo Grattarola would be safe. Section five then. This one about booking his place in the next stage, and from there he could focus on keeping his score as low as possible with the second round of competition in mind. At the moment, if he beats Gabriel Marseille, he will be in the top three regardless going into the second round, and will have an opportunity to defend a top three place. First drop mark of this section five for Grattarola, left foot goes down. So any more marks, and he will be tied with Marseille. Good work there on the back wheel. The race to the exit gate now for Matteo Grattarola. This will be enough for him to book his place in round number two. 12 marks from five sections, bouncing back from back-to-back -back failures.
And thankfully for Matteo Grasarola, it was a strong performance in section one. So even a failure here would still leave him ahead of Jaime Busto. His direct fight at the moment is with Gabriel Marseille for the lead of this opening round. Grasarola 12, Marseille finished on 13. Everyone's dropped marks in this section, and it's going to be a five for Grattarola in section six. Third rider to fail that section. Finishes his run on 17 marks, but he is through for the second round, where he will have four marks to make up on Gabriel Marseille. Marseille 13, that's looking like a very strong performance. Mateo Grattarola 17, one ahead of Jaime Busto. Benoit Bincaz will progress to the second round tonight. Mikel Jalabert and Sondre Hager still in the drop zone, 21 and 22 respectively. He's watching back Matteo Grattarola's first round and he was far from pleased with that. Thinking back to Nice when he was really on the pace with the likes of Raga and Bo, Chalons sur son the second run, he was on the pace with the big guns as well. Not a particularly competitive first run, but four marks to make up on Gabriel Marseille. Remember, there's six sections in round two tonight as well. And there's every chance that Grattarola could yet qualify through inside the top three and make it through to tonight's grand final. So we move on to the big two. Top two in the World Championships. Second at present and second for the last seven years, Adam Ragger. Occupying, as I said, that same position in 2022 thus far. 13 championship points. His deficit to uh, top spot. Coming into extra Madrid. Four times a world champion himself, of course, Adam Ragger. He's the better. 21 marks to book his place through to uh, the second round. 13 marks at the moment is the best score. Remember, there's a world championship point up for grabs for the top performer in each round of competition. And then the big 20 to the winner of Extra Madrid in today's grand final. Yeah, 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 show how it's done. Efficient work thus far in section one. Failed by three riders out of the six riders who've tackled it thus far. Matteo Grattarola was the first rider through clean. Adam Braga looking to match it. TRS man at the bottom of the section here. Gives it a big handful and up he goes. Adam Braga, second rider clean in section one. Adam Raga enjoying the applause of the uh, spectators here in Madrid. Hola, Has fond memories of this city. Sealed his first world title here back in 2003. Second in Extra Madrid, but he is twice a winner of the event back in uh, 06 and 07. Also at a, a different venue. of Raga's bike. Nice work that from Adam Raga. Gets through the eight frames without dropping a mark. Could he be the first rider clean here through section number two? It certainly looks like it. Adam Raga, great work in section two. He is still clean in this, his opening run. Raga looking good then. Fresh from securing his 40th consecutive extra podium last weekend. Chalon sur son, it was an excellent performance from him. Separated from Tony Bo by just a single mark all night. Hasn't yet taken a world championship point from Bo though. And as I said previously, trailing by 13. The target will be for him to try and win each of the rounds of the competition, particularly the grand final, of course. A five mark, a five point margin, I should say, to gain for the winner of the grand final. Section three, then. Nobody yet has been cleaned through this one. But nobody had been cleaned through section two before Adam Ragger just showed how it was done. I'm going to stay with a single drop mark in this section. The best performer of anyone through here. Adam 
Adam Ragan wants his first mark of the run. By landing on the sub. Three minutes still to go, though. A little bit behind on time, perhaps. Well, that rather depends on what he can do in section number four, because nobody's made it past the opening step of that one. Beautiful work on the back wheel there from Raga. That will help his cause in uh, terms of time, won't it? Straight into section number four. He obviously feels that one is too difficult to attempt as well. Six marks then from four sections for Adam Raga. Seven marks ahead of Gabriel Marseille with two sections remaining. Be fascinating to see whether Tony Boker moves that section four. None of the others have. Will Bo be able to make the difference? That really would raise the roof of the Madrid Arena. Penultimate section of his opening run then, Adam Raga. Banked some time with an early failure in section four. So he's got two minutes for two sections now. This twist and turn from Adam Raga. Next bit is all about technical ability. Raga's got that in spades. Big leap forward. One step still to go. One and a half minutes on the clock for Adam Raga. Safely through in section number five. Another brilliant ride from Adam Raga. Third clean of the run. Six marks then. And he will go provisionally top of the leaderboard regardless of his result in this one, section six. Just over a minute to go then. Three riders have failed this one. We saw Matteo Grattarola fall at the first hurdle, really, on this uh, opening step. And that Raga hoping to... Oh dear! Raga goes down on the first step as well. That's a bit of a surprise, actually. 11 marks then is the finishing total for Adam Raga. I was just about to say he was looking good to bank a sizable advantage over Grattarola, heading into the second round. 26 marks ahead of Grattarola, it's two better than Gabriel Marseille. Raga goes top of the standings. But he might feel that he's in danger of losing uh, another World Championship point to Tony Bowe after his failure there in Section 6 in particular. Adam Ragger just explaining to the spectators here in the Madrid Arena that he's a little bit frustrated by that, uh, what he could call the mistake in Section 6 in a section that he felt was achievable. Section 4, he obviously feels lost because he wasn't disappointed about that. The rest of his drive was strong. Single drop mark in Section 3. Three cleans in Sections 1, 3 and 5. Nobody had managed more than one team previously. So three for Raga, he takes the lead of round one. Gabriel Marseille though got through section six, so he pulls back two marks Marseille there through that final section. Adam Raga leads on 11, Gabriel Marseille 13, Matteo Grattarola 17, Jaime Busto 18, Bunrobin Kaz and Mikel Gelabert 21. Gelabert and Sondre Hager on 22 are in the drop zone and Hager will not qualify to the second round. That is now confirmed. Tony Bow. Convincing winner at Extra Chalon sur Son last weekend. Had the event wrapped up after section five in the final after a failure there for uh, Adam Raga. Bono also dropped his first points of the season to Toby Martin in the opening round of the night. But uh, 13 points his championship leads Tony Bow as he embarks on section one. Of course, if he scores better than Adam Raga's 11, then he will take another world championship point and extend that lead to 14. Silence descends over the Madrid Arena. As Tony Bow works wonders on the back wheel. For a moment there, I thought he was going to slip backwards, but this is Tony Bow. This is no mere mortal. This section completed clean by Matteo Grattarola and Adam Raga. That's the target for Tony Bow here. You can see Raga watching on. 
breath mode out before his second round as well. Bow is up. And he too is clean in section one. So that's three riders in a row clean through there. Now on to section two. The only rider who made it clean through that second section is Adam Ragga. He went on to finish on the score of 11. See how Bo manages this eight frame that's brought out all of the riders other than Adam Ragga. Building it up on the back wheel, makes the leap. Oh, beautiful from Tony Bow. Still clean. Racing on through. Oh, too easy for Tony Bow. Matches Adam Ragga clean through the opening two sections. Section three then, his first opportunity to move ahead of Ragga. Ragga dropped a single mark through this one. Very nearly touched the sump on the uh, bottom of that cable reel there, but just about pulled the back bike back in time. Longer sections uh, this evening. And if Tony Poe does end up making it through the opening step of section four, time could be a problem later on. Single mark for leaning there. Several riders have had to land it on the sump on that one. Poe is no exception then. Come down to sections four and six as to whether Tony Poe can beat Adam Racker in the opening round of competition. Swift work later on. I think he has to rush in because of his position in terms of time. First drop mark. The crowd urging him on now. Tony Poe. Is part way up in section four. That in itself earned some applause. <laughs> Carlos Benedetto now, his assistant watching on. Count Tony Bow forces his way up to the top of this section. Failed by seven riders already tonight. Bow is up. Oh, he's down. He's got much closer than anyone else, though, to making it. He landed it on the sublet lead. He could have just got it weight forward. Might have been able to try and force the bike up. Tony Bow proving he's human down for his first failure of the run. Every rider then has failed section four. Into section five now. This one cleaned by Mikel Gelabert and Adam Ragger. Failed by Bruno Binkaz and Jaime Busto. Six marks, the score. Tony Bow is already safely through to the second round this evening. Almost goes without saying, doesn't it? But Mikel Gelabert and Sondre Hager will be eliminated. Seventh and eighth positions, respectively. Bo escapes through section number five clean, so it will come down to section six for who takes the world championship points as the top seed from round number one. A five mark score here for Tony Bo, and he would be level pegging with uh, Adam Ragga. And it would be level on countback as well, so by my reckoning, it would be Ragga who would gain the advantage, but with a stuttering start, that's a surprise. He's gonna jump back to have another go. He's gotta keep the axle of the front wheel inside the section, which he does. So a single drop mark already for Tony Bow. Second attempt at this first step. And again, he's down, and Tony Bow is down for a five mark score in section number six. And it leads him tied with Adam Ragga on 11, and by my reckoning, that will give Adam Ragga the World Championship points, the bonus points, as top seed in at round number one. All tied, Adam Ragga and Tony Bow. They were in the opening two rounds of competition in Chalon sur Son last weekend. And they are again tonight in Extra Madrid. Tony Bow implies there, and I think he'll be referring to section number six because we did see Gabriel Marseille, Bruno Binkaz, Jaime Busto all make it through that section. Gratarola, Raga, and Bow, the top three in the World Championship, failing in section six. And that leaves us with a pretty close fourth pecking order actually heading into round two. Remember, the scores will carry over into the second round tonight. Not for Mikel Jalabert and Sondre Hager, of course who will be eliminated in seventh and eighth positions, respectively. Six men marching on then. Adam Ragger, top scorer in at round number one. Claims a world championship bonus point. 
Yedges out Tony Bowen, count back. Gabriel Marzegui is third at present. Four marks ahead of Matteo Grattuola, that's an advantage. He'll be looking to defend over his second run. Jaime Busto with five marks to the final. Marseille and Benoit Vitao some way further back on 21. Eight marks adrift on Marseille. The top three, the all important positions after the second round. The points will be carried over to the second phase of competition. Coming up shortly here at Extra Madrid. Eh, Trial Bike y también Alejandro.